Hello and welcome to this third Advanced Blitz Plus tutorial by Orange Moon Network. In this tutorial I will be continuing on the program we made in the previous Advanced Tutorials where we set up a basic array which was using tiles to create a map for an RPG game. In this tutorial I will be showing you how um, we can program it so you can navigate around the map using the arrow keys. So first thing we're going to do is gonna, we're going to make the program more versatile. So I showed you um, how to make this program with very specific um, number of tiles and very specific sized image tiles. So I did 50 by 50 and it's written in the code. What I'll do now is replace these values with variables so that it is much easier to change them if you want to change the size of the tiles or you want to change the size of the map. So first of all I will create some variables for the map size along the x and along the y so the number of tiles we have and this must come before array because we'll change the 13 and the 10 so we'll say global map size x I'll just say map f x sorry that's the z and um, we'll say that equals 13 and global map sy equals 10 so now in these brackets I can just change that to map size x and the 10 to map size y now there is a reason for this um, so that I will be able to just change the values up here and not have to go through the program and change everywhere because you see here it goes from 1 to 10 so I can change that to map size y and I can change this x to map size x. So let's save that. So now, if I want to change the number of tiles, I just change these variables and it changes everywhere. And also, we will make variables for the actual width and length of each tile itself in terms of pixels. So we can add this after the array because it doesn't need to come before it we'll add one called global tile width and that's equal to 60 global tile length and that's equal to 50 oh sorry they're both 50 um, so now if you are using different size tiles you can change the variables here and it's much easier and in the program I can replace the times by 50 with tile width and I'll change these here as well replace the 50s and tile length here so if you have different size tiles you want to change the size of the tiles it will you just change these variables and there'll be no problems with any overlapping tiles I'm not going to change the this offset at the moment because that's going to be vital for when um, we're going to actually move the map around. So now let's go ahead and create a new function after f draw tiles and we'll call it f move map and we put it in the main loop here. So after the first function we'll add this one in f move map end function. and we're going to detect if any of the arrow keys have been pressed and it's going to be much simpler if it just does one at a time so I'll use uh, an if statement and an else if so, so it'll look for each different arrow and it, you won't be able to do two at the same time you could change this if you want and do them all as separate if statements but I think it works better if you do them separately so you, they can't go diagonally okay so we'll do if key down and as i pretty sure I've shown you before if you go in the help tab next to the name of your file and go to the command reference just click here and then if you go on to the scan codes in interactive it will give you a keyboard with all the different keys of a keyboard and you can click on one and see what the scan code is and therefore we can detect if this has been pressed so if you want to move up let's click the up arrow that's 200 
so if key down 200 then and what we'll do is here we'll say um, that we're going to move it along the y-axis and that's where these minus 50 comes in because this is the offset so if we give this a variable as well and we'll call this one x x offset and y offset and these will be equal to 50 themselves like how they are here and now I can replace this with x offset replace them all and I can replace this with y offset and this now means that we can change this variable so we can um, manipulate where the map is on the screen and just another point I've probably explained this before but all these indents I'm using tab for and you don't need them it's just much easier and makes your code look a lot neater and easier to follow and the same as these gaps in between lines you don't need them but it looks better so now what we can go ahead and do is once you press this key then we're going to move the y offset to the left so y offset equals y offset minus one uh, you can change this but for me it works fine at this speed going one each time it loops and we'll do else if so if you're not pressing that down then it'll look for the next key key down 208 and that's the down key you can if you want to see them yourself just go back here and you can click them but I won't do that because I've already got the codes so just you can just follow what I'm putting so if you press down then you go plus one and I might have explained before as well um, blitz uses the point zero zero up here so when you go plus one it will move down minus one up and plus one on the X minus one on the X like that and now we'll do the X is so else if key down 203 then X offset equals X offset minus one and finally else if key down 205 so moving to the right then x offset equals x offset plus one and end if now let's go ahead and run that so now when I use the arrow keys down up right and left sorry it's being a bit jerky that's just because I'm running the screen capture at the same time you'll see I can move around the map um, this using plus one and minus one for the speed works fine for me because I'm doing it small screen but if you change the graphics to co um, comma one here instead of two it'll be fun screen, full screen and often full screen uh, runs much slower so you might want to change all these ones or as I've shown you before you could just add a new global and call it speed and then replace all these ones with speed and then you can change them all easily in one and now to show you how versatile all these new variables we've created are I will go ahead and make a bigger map so all I need to do is change the data here because I'm scrolling around I want a bigger map and I'll just um, copy this so now I have across here I have about I have I'll have double along the X so I'm just copying the line so now I, the X will be 26 and I'll just copy all this and add double it on the Y so there's now 20 you can do how many of you want just keep it so it's a rectangle and now when I run it you see I have a bigger map with all the different places I've made now eventually you'll see I get to a black area because that's the end of the map in future tutorials I'll be showing you how we can make it so it doesn't go to this black area and it just stops you as a barrier um, but before that we'll add in the character and we'll work out how to do the mechanics of 
a character running around the environment with boards on the end. Obviously this map isn't anything special, I just copied and pasted it. Um, so you can just go ahead and design your own level. And also there's ways of actually changing the map when you're within the game and I'll show you that later as well. So thank you for following this tutorial and I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it's been helpful. Remember to subscribe, comment and like and check back soon for the next tutorial where I'll be showing you how to create a character and animate him and get him to run around this map. So thank you and goodbye.